Welcome back and now it's time for our press review. We are going to take a look at the main headlines of our Egyptian dailies. But first, allow me to welcome my guest for today, Dr. Mustafa Rida. He is a political and economic analyst. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Let me start by taking a look at El Shirouk newspaper. In a meeting with a number of U.S. influential figures, President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi said Egypt has started diplomatic escalation to expand the domain of discussions on the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam so it becomes no longer confined to a bilateral or trilateral level. We have more details in the following report. In a meeting with a number of U.S. influential figures, President Abdel Fattah sisi said Egypt has started diplomatic escalation to expand domain of discussions on the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, so it becomes no longer confined to a bilateral or trilateral level. The president underlined that Egypt has always adopted policies that favor dialogue, emphasizing that the dam will not be operated by imposition of status quo. We have no other water resource but the Nile River, he said. The president clarified that in 2015, Egypt and Ethiopia agreed on mechanisms to fill the reservoir within the Declaration of Principles, but technical committees failed to reach an accord. Sisi stressed that any state is normally not exposed to dangers, particularly those related to water shortages, unless it goes through a phase of weakness. He cited the situation of Iraq, which used to receive 100 billion cubic meters of water annually by 1990 but today only gets 30 billion cubic meters per annual he said one of the challenges that ensued uh, from uh, the 2011 events is the construction of uh, gerd uh, impacting egypt and its people he added that it was supposed that negotiations would have taken place with ethiopian side if the egyptian state was present at the time Cairo's concern over its share was escalated after Ethiopia started building the dam on the Blue Nile in May 2011. A series of tripartite talks between the two countries, along with Sudan, has begun in 2014. One year later, the three countries reached an agreement per which the downstream country should not be affected by the construction of the dam. Welcome back. And of course, it was a very important meeting and sure. definitely tackling the issue of water and um, talking about the uh, consequences of this. Definitely, this is something of great importance as well. Sure. Uh, th certainly, the uh, water issue is a strategic issue for Egypt, you see, because uh, as mentioned, the president said that 95% of our land is desert and uh, it's the, need, uh, the vital need for water here uh, for us, you see. So again, certainly, uh, hopefully, we hope that uh, we'll have a win-win situation, as we say, between all parties, and that all, other, all parties should take consideration th the benefits that everyone should benefit and no one should be the loser in this uh, domain, you see, because uh, certainly uh, this will cause a lot of problems, not only to Egypt, to Sudan, you see, because, if, uh, because Sudan also depends on... Uh, Right. Uh, moving on to Al Masri Liu newspaper. Deputy Foreign Minister for African Affairs Ambassador Hamdi Loze held two meetings with Arab and African ambassadors accredited to Egypt to post them on developments in the talks held between Egypt and Ethiopia and Sudan on the filling and operation of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. And I think this is very much related to what, to, we, yes, yes. To what we have mentioned. Right, uh, moving on to Al Ahram uh, newspaper. Egypt has sent its sincere condolences to families of 37 victims who died in a powerful 5.2 magnitude earthquake that hit Pakistan. The foreign ministry said in a statement Thursday, Egypt's leadership and people expressed their heartfelt condolences to the Pakistani government and people, wishing speedy recovery to injured ones. Certainly, you see, uh, Egypt also is, is uh, supporting uh, when there are catastrophes and disasters in other countries. And I'll give you an example of that Sudan had a problem and we have uh, sent a lot of medical equipment and medical aid to Sudan recently. Uh, the same thing uh, for other countries. So uh, certainly this is one of the gestures that Egypt is uh, used to in order yeah. to uh, uh, keep good relations with all these countries again. Right, uh, moving on to Al Dustur newspaper. Minister of Housing, Utilities and Urban Areas Asim Al Ghazar handed over 30 social housing units to the youth in the city of 10th of Ramadan, Sharqiyya Governorate, according to a statement from the ministry on Thursday. 
The ministry is building a project of 2,200 housing units in 110 buildings at a cost of 383 million Egyptian pounds. The minister then inspected the city to be updated on the implementation of the project. And this is one of the most important achievements sure. when it comes to housing and giving the opportunity for the youth to find the places to live in, in addition, of course, to the slum areas. And urban, yes, yes. And yes, urban yes, areas, yes, yes. yes. This is very, very important. And I think we have a lot of progress in this respect. And certainly, this is the problem has been accumulated six years ago. Yes. So we don't, don't expect it's going to be solved in, in a fortnight because it's a very, very big problem. And the slum areas are all over Egypt, not only in certain... But at uh, least when we see families moving to, to live hope. in a uh, place, yes. uh, actually respecting yes. humanity, definitely this right. is uh, you know, definitely. important. Uh, moving on to Al Masri al newspaper. In a statement released on Thursday, the Ministry of Interior urged Egyptian citizens to abide by laws and rules pertinent to public order, warning it will strictly and rigorously thwart any attempts to undermine the country's security and stability. Well, this is very important that uh, everyone from himself, he should, without having this statement, we should realize that uh, we have been passing through turbulent uh, times and we saw what happened, you see, and how the economy, was, the country was about to be destroyed. So again, we don't want to destroy our country. So uh, without this statement, everyone should have this is the Actually, you have seen this. I mean, the awareness of the Egyptian people now is completely different. I mean, right. now each and every citizen is confronting any rumors and anything True. that might affect his security and stability. And Definitely. this is, yes, this is what we achieved. Um, still related, actually, moving on to Al Watan newspaper. Security authorities arrested a 51 year old man over publishing posts on his Facebook account, inciting people to demonstrate on Friday, according to a statement from the Ministry of Interior on Thursday. And the accused person is a real estate uh, broker in Sharabaya district in Cairo. Certainly, again, this, uh, this is a very important thing that we have to validate the information that we receive. We don't have to believe anything, you see. That does not apply only to this case. It applies to religious also uh, facts that sometimes are not correct, you see, and that are distributed. And unfortunately, people do not verify and do not... Uh, Maybe here it has to do with the social media. I mean, Facebook in particular. Yes. There must be rules that we have to abide by. It's it has true. nothing to do with the freedom yes. of opinion or how you want to express yourself. But when it comes that you are triggering uh, terrorism or you are uh, influence something, yes. putting rumors yes. and affecting national security of any country... This is very uh, not accepted. Yes. Yeah, true, not accepted. Moving on to Al Ahram newspaper. Egypt's ambassador to Russia, Ihab Nasr, and Russian deputy foreign minister held a session on Thursday to review the latest preparations for the first ever Russia Africa summit. The summit, set to be held in Russia's Suchi city on the 23rd and 24th of October, and it will be co chaired by President Abdel Fattah al Sisi and Russian President Vladimir Putin. How do you read this? Certainly, the, you see, there have been a turnaround in the relations between, uh, a positive turnaround between, since the President Sisi uh, assumed office. And this was evidenced not only by this, you see, by the support for the, we are heading the African Union now, so certainly uh, Russia will be supporting this. We had other uh, domains like the uh, atomic uh, Daba uh, station that is being erected by Russia, and a lot of other projects, so the relations are boosting again. And this is one of the strategies of the state, that uh, we do not depend on one continent or one bloc, you see. We have to diversify our relations with all countries. And this has been evidenced with China, with the Far East, going to places, we d we, uh, and going to Africa itself, you see. It, Africa has been neglected since a long time, since Dr. Boutros Ghali has been uh, late Dr. Botozali has been given a lot of efforts to boost the relations, but after that things went down. So certainly again, the African continent is important and uh, Russia is supporting very much our efforts and in this system. Definitely now as uh, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi and Egypt is heading uh, the, the African, African Union, of yes. course. Right, and finally from al Shirouk newspaper, the Cabinet's media center has denied reports about raising the income tax. And in a press release on Thursday, the center said it contacted the finance ministry, which uh, categorically dismissed these reports as baseless. More rumors. Again, yes, yes, sure. 
Right. Um, finally, uh, of course, uh, just uh, that was all for our press review. Allow me to thank my guest for today, Dr. Mustafa Reda, political and economic analyst. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, moving on to a quick break, then we'll be back with more <coughs> on our press review.